Happy Turkey Day to you all and to all a happy day of football after Turkey Day. With 28 seniors walking, that could be a storyline. But Oklahoma State beating BYU to go to the Big 12 title game is maybe a bigger storyline. Or the biggest storyline is possibly, out of the 28 seniors walking, how many of them can come back? You are Locked On Oklahoma State, your daily podcast on the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy, y'all, and hello, all. Welcome back to Locked On Oklahoma State, your daily stop for all things cowboy and cowgirl related. My name is Cody Stovall. I want to thank you kindly for stopping by to make this your first listen. You know we're available on all of your podcasting platforms, visually as well on YouTube. Find me personally on Twitter at All Day of State. Today, we're partially brought to you by Game Time Tickets. Download the Game Time app today, create an account, and use the code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. I want to give a shout out to all the regulators, aka the regulars that have been watching this show for a long time. We're continuing to to do some uh, growth, and I'm not just saying from the physical sense, right? I think we all grew a little bit because it's Turkey Day, and what do you do on Turkey Day? Is you watch football and you get all fat and sassy, or at least that's that's what I think you're supposed to do. And as we dive into what are the, the things that we're going to look out for this game, I think one of the biggest ones is the fact that we do, in fact, have 28 seniors that are going to be walking. But the biggest story isn't the 28 dudes that are walking, in my personal opinion. It's how many of these dudes could inevitably come back for another year. Like We know the storyline goes a little bit deeper with somebody like um, an Alan Bowman, right, who can, in fact, apply for a seventh year, likely did already apply for the seventh year, and is just waiting to receive word. Now, what he does with the seventh year, if he's given it, which I'm being told he likely would, who knows? But let's talk about the dudes that are going to be walking for senior day. Obviously, Xavier Benson. Xavier Benson, I just gave one of the defensive MVPs the other day, primarily because he's the guy that's taking on everything from a leadership perspective in the locker room and an accountability perspective on the field. So that way he can free up guys like Colin Oliver and our our main man, Nick Martin, to do a little bit more. So he deserves all of the cheers and the flowers that he's going to get for the senior day that cannot come back unfortunately right xavier is one of those guys that we know we are in fact losing we just talked a little bit about alan bowman in theory he is supposed to be done but due to covid and multiple injuries and 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 somewhere along the, the multitude of stops and the multiple surgeries he can likely get a seventh year i don't know if he would take it if he got it so i mean 50 50 on that one for me Braden cassidy to my knowledge cannot get another year uh, dude came in as a defensive end, and then he got switched to the cowboy back, the tight end position. Then he got switched to fullback position. It took him his entire career to Oklahoma State to find his his most natural disposition, and it is here at fullback. So he's going to be a great one that we see leave. Elijah Collins comes in from Michigan State, and all over the summer did in fact look like the most reasonable target to be the starter, but. Ollie Gordon obviously showed up and showed out as the season was able to move on. He is a, a team first guy, right? Being uh, roommates with Leon Johnson. They've had a wonderful time in Stillwater and they've got to chop it up about, you know, what it's like coming from different colleges to Oklahoma State. And I think Elijah has been absolutely instrumental in some of the, the, the growth and the development from not only Ollie Gordon, but obviously Jaden Nick is in, as well. And he's doing a lot for Sessie behind them. Ian Edenfield. He comes in, obviously, to transfer alongside somebody like uh, Justin Kirkland. Uh, but Ian already you know, had a decent amount of time, already spent up, so this was a year. He's done a pretty admirable job when he is asked to step up and do some blocking. He does, and he does it pretty well. And then he good low, four-star dude, transferred in from Tulsa. When he was at Tulsa, he was on the precipice of being right on some of the record books, comes to Oklahoma State. If you were to do a side-by-side analysis of Trace Ford and Anthony Goodlow, We uh, clearly, statistically speaking, and I think when you just see the result on the field, we did win that battle there. So shout out to him. Hats off. So lucky you decided to be a Cowboy because you definitely help us fill that Trace Forward void. 
Alex Hale. Alex Hale, we've talked about multiple times, right? He came in. He was pretty highly rated dude for, for what kickers are known for. Comes in immediately, does pretty daggone well. Then he goes through a couple of injuries, and then he kind of loses his, his rhythm, his stroke, his motion. He has to go back to the lab. Takes him about a year and a half to figure his kick back out, but he has. And obviously this year, he's done very well, uh, which is why he's top three in the conference in all of scoring. Josiah Johnson, the quarterback from UMass that got switched to tight end at UMass. Comes to Oklahoma State. You see this dude's potential. I really do think that he's going to get an unsigned free agent style of look just because of his natural abilities, understanding of a technicality, route running, quarterback, what he's looking for, gaps in the defense, responsibility. And, dude, he's really only got one drop all season. We, we still we have a good tight end, but we haven't found a way to use him. I think I wish we would use him more. But I think he's going to have an opportunity to do something. Leon Johnson, the third, obviously, my transfer MVP. And I went back and forth with him and Josiah. It's going to suck to see Leon go, primarily because we didn't get to see his full potential at Oklahoma State, right? It would have been nice to have him for a full year. But hopefully we get his brother Gabe in the in the mix. That way we can still have the Leon Johnson uh, feel from a family perspective and that's what we're all about Oklahoma State is family getting Gabe to Oklahoma State would be a perfect 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 rendition of that family legacy type of thing that we like to to do but again 6'5 220 500 pound squat 360 pound bench 38 inch vertical 12 one broad jump He's also going to have an opportunity at the next level, whether it be from an unsigned free agent side of things, which is fine because we've had a plethora of unsigned free agent wide receivers make it NFL rosters year after year after year. So he will be able to continue that line, and hopefully we get his brother in the mix. Nathan Alatu was last year more famously known for his brother, who was an All-American level tight end at Alabama. This year he's kind of come into his own. I would say even the last few games, you're seeing a little bit more out of him. It's another one of those guys that took a long time to kind of develop and get where we needed him to get from a Big 12 Power 5 perspective. He's finally there. It's it's going to be kind of uh, saddening to see him go because he has been pretty productive in his time. Justin Wright, another big-time get from uh, Tulsa, right? The guy who had like 220-some-odd tackles in, in two years, comes to Oklahoma State, and then immediately pays dividends right next to Xavier Benson. And you knew Nick Martin was so good. We're going to have to try to find ways to get him on the field, but he was going to split a lot of time. And, and Justin Wright was going to be you know, instrumental in the success of the linebacker core. Linebacker core has been the biggest surprise other than the O-line all daggone season, and they've lived up to the bill as one of the better linebacker cores at Oklahoma State University. Justin Wright is part of that, uh, even just from a teaching perspective. Zeke Zaragoza, long snap, snapper, comes in, competes with Feinbaum, but uh, at the end of the day, uh, I'm probably saying his name wrong, but you, you know, the, the other number 44, I'm so mad at myself. We got another long snapper, so we're good. Zeke's hair goes to story is absolutely phenomenal for not being able to walk and having a, a, a life altering ailment very young to come back and be able to even play at this level of football. And he was very good. He just, you know, ended up running into a freshman that was pretty talented and, and athletically already ready to rock and roll. So uh, another one of these guys that are going to participate is going to be Cole Birmingham. We can get Cole back. We can, we're can. we going to get Justin Wright back. We're going to get Dijon Stribling back, right? We should get Corey Black back. I, I think from a corner perspective, we're pretty squared away there. I think Ladarius Webb is going to factor into the safety position, or he could kind of uh, go back to the cornerback role if he would like to as well. But this is going to go a long way. If we land Kobe, you already know a good percentage of the reason being is because he wants to come back and play with his brother because him and Corey have always either been age differentiation or COVID apart from playing. So they never got to play together. So I, I think if Kobe's going to come to Oklahoma State, Corey naturally is going to be coming back and, and vice versa there. Colin Clay, um, you know, he's got an injury year, COVID style of year to come back. I would expect him to use that. He's graded out pretty well. He's had a very, very, very good season at Oklahoma State University. The sats aren't going to be crazy wild and sexy simply because what we're asking our 335 guys up front to do. 
But I, I honestly do expect him uh, to definitely run this thing back. I also expect Dalton Cooper to run it back. You can. You should. Hopefully you will. You've improved your draft stock considerably. Yes, that is true. But we all know. You've played yourself into what a fourth, fifth round style of, of of equation. Maybe at the end of the day, you come back and you block for a Heisman dude that's legitimately on the list, not us just saying it because it sounds cool. It's gonna enhance your 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 visibility a crap ton, just like Cole Birmingham, Kenneth Harris, the Arkansas Arkansas State transfer cornerback that we saw play a decent amount pretty early on, as we've seen with the depth we have at corner. It'll be nice to see him come back. Hopefully he does. I think that he will. Israel Usman Hunley. He's another one that, that came in, and in the spring and the fall, looked like he was going to be a, a key contributor. But then we've had guys like Xavier Ross step up in massive ways. But, uh, you know, he could be a candidate to, to transfer because he's good enough to definitely play at this level. He's just He's got a lot of dudes in front of him that are going to be difficult. One of those being Deshaun Brown. He's just, he's not quite Deshaun Brown's level and he's probably not going to get quite there, but he's a good fifth year lead, leadership presence. Joe Mahalski, one of those offensive linemen that we know can get another year and should come back just like Taylor Materko, that army Swiss knife that we can kind of rotate anywhere and everywhere at all times. You got to have that back. And he, he should probably want that as well because it's just going to, again, more eyeballs, more playing time, more capabilities when you have somebody like Ollie Gordon behind you. BP Brim Presley, as we've already dis discussed, I caught a little grief for going over the fact that, you know, he had conversations with Dunn before the season started in regards to potentially transferring after the year was over or taking his talents to the NFL. Now I'm kind of of the mind, now that he, he's jumped into the, the record books, he could come back. If he's not going to go to NFL route, he should and could come back. Xavier Ross, not one of those glue leadership guys that have actually played a, a decent amount and statistically doesn't jump off the page because what, what we ask our nose tackles to do, but he's another guy that could come back, right? Shed a little bit more weight, do a little bit uh, more body by glass, and he could be an instrumental defensive end for us moving forward, or he could transfer. I, could, I completely get that. Ray Rucker is a safety. I think he can get another year. Um. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that, that he can. I don't know that he would would. I thought that he was gone, but but maybe not there. Uh, Jake Schultz, right? Another converted Dalton Cooper, or sorry, um, you know you know what I'm talking about. Dag Nabbit. Braden Cassidy, style of, of defensive end, transition to cowboy back, transition to, to like a tight end and a fullback. I think he can come back. Jake Springfield, you can come back. Cody Waltersheed. Walter Shad, I've heard it both ways uh, for years now from both brothers. But, yeah, I think he can come back. And he's a Cowboy first style of guy. He's a Brendan Evers, Brock Martin style of guy. So I'd expect him to come back. Preston Wilson, he's going to have some NFL capabilities, a guard. He's been through a significant amount of injuries. So him and Jake Springfield are really the only two that are going to be walking that I think pose a pretty good risk of not coming back. And then you got guys like, um, you know, Israel. Isuman Hunley and Xavier Ross that could come back, but they could also go start somewhere like a Tulsa or North Texas easily and be instantaneous day one bona fide dudes. So, yeah, those are some of the guys that are going to be walking. But as we just covered, I expect a good portion of them to come back. Guys, we're looking at 75, 80 percent of the roster coming back next year, 80 percent of the roster. And that's taking into consideration guys who are going to be transferring out. And then again, we, we've already had conversations about the body by glass system is tailor-made for the recruiting class that we have coming in from a size, strength, speed perspective, especially defensively. This is not a class size-wise we've, we've ever had. Like when you look at all the linebackers, defensive ends, and everybody, and you combine them, this the class coming in is just ready. Ready to be body by glass to the max. And I can't wait to see it. I know you can't either. Another thing you can't wait for, as the snow is starting to fall like crazy here, we've already got a few inches, um, the roads can get a little wild. What you do not want to have happen is get caught without eBay Motors. eBay Motors has your back. You can't be the MVP or win anything if your rig can't make it to the game or to the job or to the airport to pick up or drop off your loved ones. You've got to have the right passion, drive, and patience. 
to bring home the W. eBay Motors is going to help you with all of those at over 122 million parts for you to choose from. You can keep your ride or die alive right here, right now with the eBay Guaranteed Fit. Your part is guaranteed to fit your rig every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, we want you to be burning rubber, baby, not cash dollars. With all the parts you need, all the prices you want, it is super easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home the W. Don't get stuck. Don't get stranded. Don't get caught out in the cold. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Go there today. Eligible items of only exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available for U.S. customers. See your special. What else is special is celebrating Turkey Day with all the, the La Familia. Obviously, we have we had a lot of people from Oklahoma come up, and the first couple days, it was fantastic. You could play football, basketball, baseball, whatever you wanted to outside. Now you cannot because it's snowing like crazy. So you know if it's going crazy here from a weather perspective, be ready. Be ready, my Okies. It's headed your way. So do expect a little bit of a, a – precarious weather game against BYU, but we'll still show up and show out. That's how we rock as O-State Nation, regardless of the weather, and we all know the implications. It's it's a big one. So as you have your, your family around and you're still grubbing on the leftover Turkey Day festivities, we got to be thankful here. The first thing we got to be thankful for is the fact that we have 28 seniors and most of them can and likely will return. A good chunk of these guys are coming back. So we got to be thankful for the guys that we have participating in the walk that can likely come back. If we're making a Big 12 title run now, next year should be, not, I mean, nothing's guaranteed in this conference, but the writing should be on the wall. So I'm thankful for these 28 dudes and the fact that a good majority of them come, can come back. I'm thankful for the emergence of the offense. Right? Well, we know Tim Ortiz had more involvement now than ever over the last month. Obviously, Mike Gundy, you know, he's been getting his hands in involved with the offensive design. Kale Gundy having uh, barbecue conversations with Casey Dunn doesn't help. I'm sorry, doesn't hurt, I'm sure. And Casey Dunn, right? There's obviously some improvement there. I'm thankful for the wide receiver core that we have. I'm very thankful for the staff, the guys like JW and Benny Tonga and Coach Wozniak and Greg Richmond and Rochetti Jones that have been able to reach out to all of these transfers to get this class to come into Stillwater to stop the bleeding. Because we did have some bleeding in the transfer market. We did. Gunny's already given credit and kudos to the other guys on staff. And now he's more involved. And this staff that we have to be thankful for is responsible for what we've been able to put together on the field as a product. Thankful for that. Thankful for Chad Weiberg for having the intestinal fortitude to have enough conversations with the appropriate amount of people and Mike Gundy himself to make sure that Oklahoma State was trending the right way coming into the new, new Big 12. Because there are some serious contenders coming in. Obviously, we know what Utah brings to the table. We obviously know that Arizona's won WA as well from playing for a conference championship. Obviously, they're going to have to fend off a lot of people for jet fish. But if, I know they have, they have some monetary uh, issues, but if they can find a way to bridge the gap financially to keep Jetfish, that's a good product. Colorado, I know they kind of you know started off hot. They were the the Cinderella, the darling, the talk of all of college football, and they've fallen back into reality recently. But it's still Neon Dion. He's still going to recruit like crazy. They're still going to shave some fat. They're going to get some more people in the transfer market. But it's going to be even more appealing now because of the start that they got. People are going to realize that, okay, we're going to likely win at Colorado. So thank you, Chad Weiber. 
Thank you, Coach Brian Nardo, for making adjustments and being able to make adjustments. Thank you for Coach Joe Bob Clements. This linebacker core is phenomenal. It just is. Is it going to be as wild, crazy, and maybe sexy as Devin Harper, Malcolm Rodriguez? No, maybe not, but we don't need it to be either. Thank you, Charlie Dickey and Coach McIndoo. Coach Dickey, you were given an opportunity. You have now shown us and the world, if you give me a running team and you let me simplify my offensive line, this is what I can do for you. This is what I can give you. And now we got a bunch of these dudes that can come back. Will that in, in inevitably, inevitably lead to some transfers? Yeah, probably, possibly, but it's part of the game now. I'm excited about the class we have coming in. I'm excited that we do have another year of a bunch of six-year, seventh-year seniors. I just am. And lastly, thank you, Mike Gundy, because your, your previous stubbornness and lackadaisical nature and understanding and grasping the severity of, of what some of the issues were they could have sent a spiraling downward, but you did respond. The locker room buy-in was huge. But without Gundy's full-on buy-in, this turnaround probably don't happen. Because the players can only do so much. Coach's job is to simply put players in the best positions to be successful. Don't overcomplicate it. We did that early on in the season. We did that last year. We haven't really done that this year, and it's made the locker room camaraderie so much different than anything that most anyone's ever seen before. It's another reason why I expect a lot of these sixth, seventh-year guys to take another crack at it because you're not going to get a locker room this close all the time. So I'm thankful for all those things, and i got to save the best for last. Most importantly, I'm thankful for y'all. I know that uh, not everybody always agrees, and that's okay. We don't have to. We don't have to always agree, but we can always see the bigger picture, right? The light at the end of the tunnel. America's brightest orange light at the end of the tunnel, to be exact. And I think, yeah, accountability has to fall at the top. Right, because if, if crap rolls downhill, so does accountability. And I do think, for better or worse, in the last month and a half, we have finally got enough accountability and acknowledgement of issues that we've resolved a significant amount, which has put us in the position we are now. So, a lot of things to be thankful for. Another thing you could potentially be thankful for is tickets. Like I said, it's going to be pretty wild weather-wise for the BYU game. It's not going to be like crazy, but it's not going to be comfortable either. Thankfully for you, if you haven't planned in advance, you don't have to because game time tickets has you covered. Right here, right now, you're not going to have to worry, okay? Last-minute tickets all the way up to the event or even an hour after. It's the easiest way to buy tickets for sports, comedy, music, and theater with last-minute killer deals and all-in prices. You get a view from your seat, the best price guaranteed. Game time literally takes the guesswork out of it, and you don't have to wait months in advance. You can do it at the very end. With zone deals, you get to pick a section, and game time can even pick a seat for you for an average of 18% savings if you want to go that route, or you can do it physically yourself find the tickets, see the view, see the seat and exactly what the view is before you buy them or show up. And with the guaranteed game time, it means that you'll get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section or row for less, game time will credit you back 110% of the difference. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets at any time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use the locked on college code for $20 off your first purchase. Again, download the Game Time app, create that account, and use that code locked on college for $20 off. Terms apply. Create that code. Redeem 
with Locked On College, L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-C-O-L-L-E-G-E for $20 off. Download the Game Time app today. Last-minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. All right, keys to victory. Uh, you know, pretty, pretty simplistic. We covered it the other day. Statistically, they're at the bottom of so many categories. On paper, it shouldn't be a game, but they don't play the game on paper. I think number one is just going to be limiting of their linebackers. Their linebackers are good. They do a lot of, of movement. They do a lot of mix and match. They try by design to take certain parts of your favorite game away from you. So if you get into Max Tooley and Bong Pong, then I think uh, you're going to do pretty well and be able to open up the running game. With the weather being slightly crappy, well, we already know they're going to put a bunch in the box. They're going to dare us to throw the ball. So it's important that we get an extra hat, whether it be a Braden Cassidy or a Josiah Johnson, on the linebackers. So if we work out there, get a, an extra defender onto their linebacker core, I think that will be enough exploitation to get Ollie Gordon rocking and rolling. We could talk about the O-line, D-line all day, every day, but we're, we got to. I've been saying Deshaun Brown is an NFL-level dude. I'm waiting on the day that he just goes absolutely berserk. BYU does not run the ball well. They know that. We know that. The world knows that. So they're going to maybe try to establish the run, especially with the weather being crappy. But if we can shut them down with our main guys inside, Colin Clay and or Justin Kirkland, which we've been able to control the A-gaps for the most part, that should buy more time. Because in the crappy weather, they're going to be a little bit more cautious, I would think, and throwing it deep. So they're going to be paying attention to a lot of short intermediate stuff, which typically gives the quarterback an extra pump, right? An extra hitch in his giddy up. It's going to give guys like Deshaun Brown to hammer a home alongside Nathan a lot too. And then from an offensive side, give me more Josiah Johnson. Give me more Leon Johnson the third. We're not going to see them very often in Cowboy jerseys again after tomorrow. So just give us a full dose of Leon Johnson and Josiah Johnson all day, every day. Please obviously let Ollie do his thing and get his. But those are two seniors that are both going to have an opportunity to have at least, at least, bare minimum, a cup of coffee in the NFL. They're going to get invites. They're going to be able to go to rookie OTAs, mini camps, that type of thing. They're going to get looks. It's going to be a crappy weather game so that the opportunities they're going to get need to be maximized. Maximize their opportunities, please. Get Josiah Johnson, get Leon Johnson the third rocking and rolling. Um, and, and I think those will all sort out the rest. Um, as far as the Big 12 slate goes, listen, you know, we already said it's illegal to root for Texas. So we're not going to do that. But I'll be honest with you, secretly kind of hoping they win because I want the biggest Texas with all the marbles. Um, yeah, the, the whole nine yards, right? You, you know the drill. Now, I would have picked OU, but I'm kind of late to the party. So that one's kind of cheating. So I can't really do that. But I will say, Give me Texas over Taco, Reckham, Tech. Give me UCF over Houston in some sort of space race type of game. Give me West Virginia over uh, Baylor. Give me KU over Cincinnati. And give me Iowa State in the upset over K-State in Farmageddon. I know it's in Manhattan, but Iowa State loves this weather, man. They do. They feed off of it. I know K-State doesn't mind it, but it is different. So I, I, I don't know, I'll take the Cyclones. And then I'll take our Cowboys, which means it is Oklahoma State, no fear, against Texas. All gas, no brakes, leave no quarter. Show no mercy, Mike Gundy, in this one. Do it again against Texas. Let the chips fall where they may. All right, y'all. God bless. Go, Pokes. You know I love you. Thank you so much for tuning in to make this your first listen.
All righty, y'all. Appreciate you. Later, taters.